In this section, we're taking a look at the Android 2D Graphics API, and we're learning that this API provides the capability to render graphics of different shapes. So for example, we can render rectangles, circles, or lines, and in this section, we're taking a look at circles. So the next question to ask is, in order to render circles, what is the API, and the names of the objects and methods, to make this work. So, for example, we need to have a reference to a path object to describe the vector of what we're going to draw. We're going to also need a paint object to describe the paint color. And also when we get to lines, we have to specify the width of the paint brush. So the color that we use is something like blue, so we'll say either the RGB value or we'll use this constant, color dot, and then blue or whatever color name that we want to use. All right, so we're looking at this Android 2D API. And we're going to reference this method called setColor. And we're going to pass in color.blue or color.red or color.green. We're going to invoke the method called addCircle. Uh, also, we looked at add rectangle, but now we're looking at add circle. And the only difference is that circles uh, don't have a uh, height and width. They don't have a, um, a four corner uh, specification. What they have is a center and then the size, the, rate, the um, diameter that we want to use. All right, so the draw path method will take whatever we describe in our path and uh, draw that vector over the canvas using the paintbrush color that we specify. All right, so we're looking at this sample application. It's called Android 2D Graphics underscore circles. And the basic idea here is that we have a blue circle that's rendered on our canvas. And the center of the circle is right around here, 100 comma 100. And the size of the circle is defined by the radius. So we can see that some of it is going to the um, positive direction. And then also, since it's so large, there's actually some going past 0 comma 0, and then back under the hidden direction as well. So what we want to learn about is, in this example, how does the code change from rendering a rectangle and what is the argument list for a uh, add circle method? So let's take a look at this. We'll close the view of the hardware. Uh, we can actually stop the application running on the hardware. And we'll jump back into the code. So remember that by default that the Android template wants to invoke main.xml. And we can see that in this example, even though the file is here by default that there's no content that we need out of it. It's just the standard stuff. So if we go back over into the code, what we see is that the set content view has been replaced. And it's going to render the content that our object specifies. So what is our object? It's called my view underscore circle. And it's expecting a parameter, the context of the application uh, window, like a handle. It's going to automatically uh, set it up by calling the super method, the super constructor uh, that we get when we inherit the stuff out of uh, the view object. And then within the function called onDraw, we could specify what to do when the Android operating system invokes this method. And it's important to always remember that whether we're working with circles, rectangles, or lines, that we don't specify the timing and we don't call the onDraw uh, function ourselves. What we can do is we can control what happens to the canvas after the Android operating system invokes this when it feels like it needs it. And we know that it needs it at least once when the application starts. And it might actually re-render it again uh, down the road if it wants to refresh and update the uh, screen. And that could happen just by simply opening another application and having that come to the forefront. And when the um, app that we write here with the graphics comes back on the top of the stack of applications, then the uh, method could get called again. So we don't really know how many times in the life cycle of the application that this method on draw will uh, get called, but we know it gets called at least once. So now we have the path. The path is basically saying what is the vector path to paint something. And the um, path here is going to set up a, uh, a circle object. So add circle at the location uh, 100, 100. And the um, size of the radius is 500. 
and um, the direction parameter. In this case, um, rotating a circle isn't going to change the appearance of it too much, but it's a parameter that's required. So also, we have this paintbrush uh, object P2. We're setting the color to blue. And together, we can use the draw path method to say draw this vector graphics shape using this uh, paintbrush color. And that's how we get that object on the screen. All right, so now that we understand the basic logic behind this example, um, we can just make a, a minor change here just to see that this is the code that controls the radius. Let's look at that one more time. We could build this from scratch, but let's take a look at what our goal is. All right, so our goal is to draw a circle uh, somewhere on the screen. So let's close the uh, app. And from Eclipse, we'll choose File, New, and then Android Project. All right, so let's give this a name. And we'll click on the button here for uh, Google APIs and API level 12. All right, so here's the package name. And the um, app, we'll call it uh, P Graphics. Let's copy that again. All right, now I'll double check the project name. Android 2D Graphics. And remember that this is the Eclipse name. It doesn't actually get deployed onto the phone. This is the app name that does get deployed onto the phone. This is the package name. That's the folder name that's used to store the app. And activity, yes, go ahead and create an activity. We'll hit finish. All right, so now let's go ahead and find that app. Here's our uh, circle build example. Uh, here's the default template. It wants to load main.xml. And just to test out the run config, we'll edit strings XML. We'll go to raw XML view. We'll add an asterisk. And we'll set up the run config so that the app uh, loads on the uh, hardware. All right, so Android 2D graphics uh, circles and then run config. And this is for the build example. All right. Android 2D graphics. Perfect. Okay, so now we have our blank project. We have the run configuration set up. Uh, we deployed it, compiled it, deployed it to the phone. And now we're going to swap out main.xml so that we're using the graphics API instead of the markup language uh, API for the UI. So we'll close this. We can stop the application. And we'll comment out. and replace the uh, reference here to a new object. And we'll pass in this as the parameter.
So the definition of a, a view from the Android API, android.view. The constructor for the object needs to have a reference back to the activity. That's why we pass the context. Oh, the, uh, the error message is saying that it's expecting us to pass the context to the, the uh, superclass of the view. All right, so far, so good. So at runtime, Android's going to call the canvas, or the onDraw function, passing in its canvas. So the Android OS provides the canvas on where it wants to write. So we have our path. We have our uh, paint object. All right, so on the paint object, we'll set the color blue. And for the path, we'll invoke this method called add circle, passing an xy radius. the direction. And finally, we have the paintbrush color set up. We have the vector, the path to uh, render. And now on the canvas, we could say, draw that path, passing in P1, comma P2. And uh, let's test this. And there we go. So we're looking at our build example, and we just created this circle. It's located based on 0, 0. It's located at 100, 100, with a radius of uh, 100 as well. And if we uh, make this number really large, like uh, 1,000, there we go. So we can see basically, um, depending on the orientation of the, the tablet, that this is a really, really big circle. Make it 500 just to finish that off. All right, so that wraps up our uh, sample code for building a circle and placing it on the screen here at 100, 100 with a really big radius. And here we can actually see the arc that it generates.